Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be making this little table and chair set. This is part of our homestead series and this little table and chair sat in the kitchen of my grandparents' homestead house. But before we get started on that, I just wanted to talk a little bit about measurements. When I'm editing my videos, I'm always on the lookout for ways that I can improve my videos. And one of the things that I noticed that I did a lot of in the last video was while I was explaining the process, I waffled a lot between the imperial system and the metric system. And I feel like that's something that I need to fix. Now, I'm a Canadian gal. And in this country, right up until I was 16 years old, we used the imperial system. So I learned to measure things in feet and inches. When I was in high school, Canada introduced the metric system. And I've been using the metric system ever since. So I feel like I'm very well versed in both, which is probably why I waffle back and forth so much. Now, most countries use the metric system. But there are a few exceptions, and I know that the United States still uses the imperial system. The last thing that I want to do is alienate my neighbors to the south by using a form of measurement that they're not familiar with. Most tools used to measure, including the ones made in the United States, have both forms of measurement on it. As an example, these steel rulers that most miniatures use have inches on one side and centimeters and millimeters on the other side. I also know that you can go online and you can print free conversion charts to keep handy that will show you the conversion between the imperial system and the metric and vice versa. So having said that, I'm going to make a conscious effort to just use one form of measurement when I'm explaining process and I've decided to use the metric system. Now, if my video includes cutting instructions, which a lot of my videos do, I promise I will still continue to put both the metric and the imperial measurements in those cutting instructions, which hopefully will help. Okay, enough about measuring. Let's get started on our project. Let's go through some of the different materials you'll need for this project. So I have used two different types of wood. The first piece is three thirty seconds of an inch or two and a half millimeters in width. You'll need a very small piece for this. All we're going to be doing is the tabletop and the seats for the chairs. I also used this one thirty second of an inch or 1.5 millimeter wood and this is just balsa wood. And I, I don't normally use balsa wood because it's very soft and it breaks very easily. But in this case, I, there was a couple of pieces that I wanted to bend slightly. And this particular wood has some real give in it. I'm also going to be using a couple of different sizes of dowels. So this is a round dowel and this is five millimeters across. I also have a piece of square dowel, which is also five millimeters across. I'll also be using this smaller wood dowel, and this is three and a half millimeters on each side. I have some craft match sticks, which will be part of the chairs. You'll use likely two per chair, um, but if you have some extras, that's great. Um, and that's pretty much it for the materials, but for the tools, I of course have my craft knife, um, a good sharp pencil, the pair of tweezers, my metal ruler, um, some Gorilla wood glue, and just some toothpicks for spreading the glue. I have my setup blocks. I also have some sandpaper, two different grades. One's a medium grade, I think it's a 120, and then a fine grade, which I think is about a 400. And then I have my little chomper tool. Um, you can also use a craft knife if you don't have one of these. So those are the tools we're going to be using. So let's get started. We're going to start with the table first. So you can go ahead and pull out your pieces A through G. And first I just want to talk about the top of the table. So that's pieces A, B and C. So you'll have A is the top of your table. And then you'll have two pieces marked B and two pieces marked C. And these pieces will just sit underneath the table and we'll just kind of sit in like that in between where the legs of the table are going to come out 
Now, I like to sand all of my wood pieces after I've cut them. That's just a personal preference of mine. You don't have to do that. I just find, find that the smoother the wood is, the more realistic the piece looks. I have also on this piece on the top, just gone in and just kind of smoothed over the corner. So in between the top and the side, and I've just kind of brought that down, just gone over each side a couple of times, just to take that sharp edge off of the top of the table piece. I'm gonna put these pieces aside just for a few minutes. Um, and I do want to talk about the table legs because we need to make those first. So I'm just going to put those away. And for your table legs, now you can use a ton of different stuff for your table legs. Um, you can just cut off to length pieces. Um, this is a three and a half millimeter square dowel. You can cut the piece just from that one piece um, of wood. Um, there's a slightly thicker, this is the five millimeter square dowel. Um, again, you can just cut off the length that you need. You can also, if you wanted to use round dowels, and I have the same width um, as the square dowels, but just in the round, so a three and a half millimeter and a five millimeter piece. You can also use these little mini spindles for a staircase. And I love these because you have this little bit more of an ornamental look to them. Um, it makes the, the table look just a little bit fancier. Um, and these work great for table legs. Now this one is kind of um, pointed off at the end. If you don't like them to be tapered down that much, you can cut that off. Um, or you can add a bead to the bottom of it. Um, I have these little wood beads and you can slap that on the bottom and that kind of adds a little bit of a finishing touch on the bottom and I'll be honest I have never been more tempted to cheat <laughs> and use these little spindles for my table legs however um, I promised myself when I started this project that wherever possible I was going to be as true to the original house as I could possibly be this particular table I did actually find the original table in the museum visit that I did back in May. And I have pictures of it, which I'm gonna show you. And so because I have a picture and I know exactly what the table looked like, I'm going to build as close as I can the table legs um, to match the original table. So that's what I'm gonna show you. But like I said, if, if you wanna shortcut that and use any of these other options, by all means, feel free. I would if I could. So this is the table leg that I created. I just used um, one small piece of the five millimeter square dowel, and then three pieces of the five millimeter round dowel, which on each piece, I've kind of tapered down and rounded off the edges to make it look like um, it's uh, all one piece, but maybe it was turned on a lathe, maybe. Um, anyway, it's as close as I could come to the original. And so this is what I'm going to do in the tutorial. So most of the shaping of these little tiny pieces is just done with sandpaper. And so it's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience um, but if you stick with it um, hopefully you get the desired effect or hopefully I'll get the desired effect I'm looking for so let's start with the little square piece so in this example you can see that I have tapered down just one side uh, the top side of that piece we're going to leave flat because that's going to be glued to the ch to the bottom of the table. Um, but I do want to taper down um, the bottom part of that. Um, and so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sandpaper and I'm just going to do um, swipes on each of the side. And I think as long as you're doing the same number of swipes on all four sides, it should come out pretty uniform. So 
here we go. I'm going to start with eight on each side and we'll see how that looks. So just holding it like at a 45 degree angle. So now I have a nice tapered end, but there's enough of the square left in the middle to attach to the round dowel that's going to go next. So the next section is this small seven millimeter piece of round dowel. Instead of cutting that piece off and trying to hold it and do that sanding down, I'm actually going to sand it down and then cut it off. So I'm just lightly going to pull it towards me. I'm going to continuously turn it and hopefully it'll be uh, uniform and consistent at the end of the day. There we go. So I just round it off just a touch and then I can go ahead and cut that off. I had pre-measured already, so I know where I'm going to be cutting. And with this tool, you can cut all the way through in one um, in one pressured cut, but I find that it's better to just start kind of working your way around um, and just going through a little bit each time. So there's my piece rounded on one side already. Um, now I'm going to just try and round the other side as well. I feel like I'm filing down my fingernails at the same time. <laughs> okay, so that's rounded now on both sides. The next piece I'm going to do is this piece down at the bottom. And again, I'm going to leave it on the stick until I've done all of the sanding, just so it's easier to hang on to. This is quite a bit um, more of a tapered side. And then once I've cut it off, I'll round off the top as well. Okay, and then I'll just chop that off. So that'll be the bottom piece. And then we have this middle piece, which is 35 millimeters. And I'm just going to round off one side and taper down a little bit the other. Really, this process is just an awful lot of sanding and even more patience until you get the shape that you're looking for. You can use a toothpick to put that glue on, or you can just dip it into the glue. Again, I just keep turning it so that I can make sure it's straight. And then the last piece. And then I'm going to take that toothpick and I'm just going to very gently scrape out the glue from those seams so that you can see that there is a definition in there. There we go. 
and we'll do that for four pieces. So here's our four table legs. So I'm just going to double check and make sure. And I'll use my setup box to do that. Okay, and they look pretty good actually. Um, I don't see any significant difference in the length, which is really the most important thing. Um, the last thing we want is for our chair to wobble, or sorry, our table to wobble. So now that those are together, I am just going to go over them very lightly with the light sandpaper, just to take out any of the little imperfections that I see left over from the uh, from the coarser grain. And so it doesn't take much. Like I said, this is a very very fine um, sandpaper, and so it'll just smooth out some of these little imperfections. So on the tabletop on the bottom, what I did was I measured out seven millimeters from each side on each of the corners. And I did that so that the table legs would all be um, at the same distance on the back. And so by putting that line there as like an L-shaped, I know that I can put then my table leg just on the inside of that L and then each of the legs will have the same distance on the outside of the table. I'm going to be using my setup box again just to make sure that the table leg goes on there straight. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the first one in and I'm going to go around in a circle and I'm going to add those supports in as I go. Put that first one in right on the corner. And then I'm going to use my setup block because I know that square dowel on the bottom is straight. And we'll just use that as a guide to make sure that it stays up there nice and straight. The next piece will be one of our B pieces. And so I just put glue on one end and on the bottom, and I'm gonna place it straight up and down against the side. And I'm afraid I'm just gonna eyeball it to get it straight. As far as distance from the front add those pieces in as I go and then I know the fit is perfect. I'll take my toothpick and just get rid of some of the excess glue. Let's move on to the second chair leg. And then we'll take one of our C pieces and we're going to place it here. Get them only gluing on two sides.
and our final piece which I had to actually sand one side just a tiny bit because it was just a little bit too snug. Even the glue makes it tight. And that's it. It's actually was much simpler than I thought it was going to be. But there's the completed table. And let's see if it wobbles. Nope, we're good. Awesome. Okay, we're going to move on to the chair. Um, the first thing you want to do before you start putting your chair together is to make sure that the chair fits underneath the table. So I'm just going to take my table and I'm just going to take the front of the chair seat and make sure that it goes in that space so that you can push the chair in. I made another chair and table set one time, got it all together, didn't check that. And then when it was all finished, I went to push the chair in and I'd made the chair too wide and I couldn't get it to go under the table and I was not very happy with me. So if you're gonna be pushing in your chair that you make sure that it's gonna fit. So just a little tip. Okay, so this is our chair seat. And on the back, I have marked out some measurements. So the back of this seat is 28 millimeters. The front of the seat is 35 millimeters. When I put my chair legs on, I want them to be square. So they're going to be sitting right in the corner on the back side and they'll be in a little bit from the corner on the front side so to make sure that I have that square all I did was I subtracted uh, 35 minus 28 that gave me seven millimeters I divided that in two and I went in three and a half millimeters from each side so that should give me a perfect square So here's our four chair legs and they are 35 millimeters in length and I've cut these out of the 3.5 millimeter square dowel. And we're going to just make sure before you do any gluing that they're all the same size. And I also go in and I will make sure that the bottoms at least the bottoms, if not the bottoms and the top, are sanded off nice and smooth because if you have a little bit of an um, extra piece kind of sticking out there, then they won't glue well to your chair. Add those chair legs. I would go in on each of those legs and make a pencil mark at the, the 10 millimeter mark and then the 17 millimeter mark. And do that on all four of your pieces. And what that will do is it will help to guide you when you put the support pieces across the chair legs um, and then they'll all be kind of at the same height. I have set that chair leg back about one millimeter from the front. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and then 
we're going to start putting in some supports in between those legs. So we're going to go ahead and glue those supports in. You may want to use a pair of tweezers. It does get pretty tiny in there. So I'm just going to put glue on either side of that support. And then using those lines that we pre-drew, I'll go ahead and place that inside. And I'm placing that below that pencil line that we drew in. And then we'll go ahead and put a secondary piece in just underneath the second line that we drew at 17 millimeters and that'll add some real strength to the legs of the chair and they're not as likely to collapse or bend on you once those supports are in. These are one of those pieces marked with an asterisk on your sheet which I would not recommend you cut until you get to this point uh, because you'll want to do a measurement from one leg to the other just to make sure that you've got the right distance. We're going to work on the back next. As you can see, the back of this chair is angled up from the bottom. And it's going to sit with these two pieces of back support on either side. And when I put those on, if I then try and put that onto the back of the chair, that piece of wood at the bottom is at um, the wrong angle to be able to do that. Um, it's cut straight across and so if I glue it on you can see that it's definitely not going to give the same distance on both sides. So I need to trim down this piece so that it sits out at an angle. So how to get the right angle? Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the chair back and I'm going to place the uh, back support flush along the side of that of that chair back and then if you bring it back forward you will actually be able to see um, that one side is flush with the bottom and the other side sticks out so I'm going to use that as my guide and I'm going to recut with my exacto knife to shave that part so that it is completely flat um, while sitting off to the angle. So there I've cut it off now. Again, I'm going to put it flush with the, with the back of the chair. So now when I go to glue that piece onto the chair, it's going to sit out at the angle that I need it to sit at. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side, which is your other piece here. And so I'll do the exact same process on this side so that I can level off this piece as well. I'm going to shape the bottom of this chair back just a little bit before we install it. Um, if you remember from the picture, that piece on the picture is not straight across. It does have this little bit of a, a cutout on the bottom. So I want to do that before we try and put any kind of back supports on it. And I'm just going to do that with my craft knife. Um, as I said, this is balsa wood. It's very soft and with a few swipes, 
I should be able to get that little piece out of there. And I just hand drew. I don't, didn't get too particular about uh, measuring. I just kind of eyeballed it. And so I'll cut that out. Um, you will notice in the video going forward that the chair back in the video does not have this piece cut out. Uh, that's because I forgot this step when I was making the chair and I didn't realize it until the chair was completely put together. And so I had to end up doing this cut with the chair completed. However, if you're following along exactly, I wanted to tell you before you got to that point um, and show you what you'll need to do to get that little piece out um, so that you don't have to try and cut it out or when the chair is completely done. I've just cut that little piece out. I'm going to sand it, of course, to smooth it out. And that will be the piece. That's what the piece should look like going forward in the video. If you want to take your back piece, this is made out of that much thinner um, balsa wood almost. So it's very flexible. It's very soft. And what I want to do is I want to create a slight curve. This is the top of the chair back. And I want it to be uh, curved so that when you put your back against it, there's a little bit of more of a natural curve to it. So it does bend fairly easily. It doesn't stay bent. Um, and so I've just kind of been working with it just very gently, um, bending, releasing, um, all the way across the back and I am starting to see that it's not perfectly straight anymore. Um, you can see that I'm starting to get that little bit of curve and it doesn't have to be much. You just don't want it straight across, that's all. So I think I'm going to leave it at that and we're going to go ahead and glue that now onto the back supports. So I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on there and we're going to attach it to the two side supports you want to make sure you're paying attention to which sides of those two that you shave down at the angle so that we're not gluing it to the uh, to the wrong side and i'll just start with one side you don't have to put the glue all the way up to the top because the top part of this chair back will stand uh, above the two supports so i'm only going to go up about the same distance that I did here and then we'll place that on the side of the chair and you can put it probably close to the middle of this piece it doesn't have to sit flush against the front or the back unless you want to I'm going to put mine in the middle So, and then we'll do the same to the other side and we'll glue it like that. Always removing any excess glue if I can. The reason why that's important is um, not only is the finish nicer, but if you're using a stain, the stain will not adhere to glue. And so what you'll find is you'll have little tiny pieces where your glue is where the stain won't stick and then it doesn't look completely finished. So paint will usually go over glue, but stain won't. So I try and get as much of the glue off of there as I can. Our next piece is this little crossbar that goes underneath. And I've cut that. It's also at a bit of an angle. So if the top of that is 23 millimeters, the bottom edge is 21 millimeters. So it's about a millimeter difference on either side from the top to the bottom. And so it will sit in like that.
and there's our chair back um, we have one more little piece on the top and that's this little guy and what I'm going to do because in the picture it looks like the top of the chair is inset into the bottom of that um, if I do that it's going to make this piece very very thick so instead of doing that I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut off just about a millimeter of one of these pieces off of the bottom and then um, that piece is going to sit on top and then the other piece will sit down just a little bit farther and it'll look like it's inset. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just going to take one piece and with my ruler I'm going to cut off about a millimeter. Okay, so our thinner piece is going to sit right on top of this piece, like so. Just to get it to the middle. And it'll sit like that and then this piece will sit on top of that so that it will actually look like the back is actually inset into that piece I'm just going to take some glue now and I'm just going to cover that whole piece And then we'll lay that secondary piece on top. And as long as we're flush on the sides and on the top, and then once that's done, all the only thing we have left then is to just install the back of the chair onto the base of the chair. As you can see I've gone ahead and painted the table and chairs. I put two coats of acrylic paint and then I also put a top coat of a matte podge on top as well which will just protect the paint a little bit. And so our table and chairs are completely finished and I'm going to go ahead and put those into the house. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial as much as I enjoyed putting together the table and chairs. In our next video, we're going to stay inside the homestead kitchen and we're going to be building the refrigerator. So I hope you join me for that. And until then, happy crafting.